So what we're going to talk about in the prelim card is going to be a heavyweight battle between Jorgen DeCastro and Sean Asher. Now, you might recognize the name Jorgen DeCastro, who was on the UFC roster last year. Unfortunately, was let go. Jorgen DeCastro goes by the Mad Titan. He's 7-3-0 overall, 2-3 in his last five fights. He hails from Cape Verde, though he's currently based out of Fall River, Massachusetts, 34 years old, 6 foot in height with 74 inch reach. He trains at a regiment training center. As for Mr. Asher, who goes by the Bully, 13-4-1 overall, 3-2 in his last five fights. He hails out of Ohio, 42 years old, 6 foot in height with 73 inch reach. Now, looking at tapology, it appears that DeCastro is the favorite getting 92% of the votes here, only 8% of the votes coming in for Asher. I like you're going to win the fight. I believe experience wise, he has the you know advantage. I think youth wise, clearly has an advantage. Let's talk about the run that Jorgen Castro had in the UFC. In 2019, he wins a fight on Dana White Contender Series, round one, hammer fist over Alton Meeks. Woo, things are looking good, right? Then goes to UFC, fights Justin Taffa, knocks him out in UFC 243, Whitaker versus Adesanya. First round knockout, two minutes and 10 seconds. So things are looking great. That's 2019. In 2020, he loses by decision against Carlos Felipe and Greg Hardy. Okay, whatever. His last fight under his contract was against Jaris Danho. 2021, last year, April, gets knocked out. Pretty terrible knockout round one. I mean, it's a one-hit wonder type of knockout. He gets knocked out. Unfortunately, UFC lets him go. He then went on to fight in November of last year against Danelle Williams, where he won by decision in CSC 65, where he was the main event, main, excuse me, where he was the main event to Castro versus Williams. The guy is a decent level heavyweight. I believe he's at least Bellator level material, maybe PFL material, obviously trying to work his way back in kind of a heavier set guy, but very athletic, moves well on his feet and has a lot of power like most of these heavyweights do. Now, let's talk about Sean Asher. Here's a guy who's coming off of a loss against Steve Marry. That was back in April of last year in Bellator 257. So he's fought in Bellator twice. He's 0-2 in Bellator. He's also fought in RFA, which I believe he's 0-1 in RFA. He's fought for turf wars. He's fought, he's fought for hard knocks, but hasn't really been able to break through the top level. At this point in his career, 42 years old, he's never been the most agile or fleet of foot fighter. But I think now... Age is becoming more of a factor. He's slowing down even more. If you look at his fight links in the description there, you're going to see a fight that he fought in 2011. I would encourage you to watch this fight. It's absolutely hilarious. Somehow he gets pulled out of the ring. Him and the fighters land out of the ring, but he like doesn't get up. And he's, I guess, claiming that he got hit in the head somehow. And he's not feeling well. So they're trying to analyze him. While the referees are talking to him outside the ring on the floor, some kids come over to like checking on him, like, are you okay? There's like a crowd of people around him. I'm like, what kind of promotion is, what kind of backyard shit is this? Anyway, the bottom line is, I don't believe Sean Asher has enough here at 42 years old to compete with Jorgen DeCastro. Now the money line is a little scary at minus 400. I think that's very risky if you were to play that. Now granted, this is, this is prelim card here for EFC, but at minus 400, I'm saying Jorgen DeCastro probably wins the fight. I just won't have any part of this from a betting perspective. It's better off just to watch it and see what happens. For Jorgen DeCastro, I hope he can find his way back to Bellator, PFL, UFC, something at that level. I think he kind of got a tough deal there with the decision losses to Felipe and Greg Hardy and then being let go. I'm going with DeCastro win the fight, probably by a TKO of some kind. I think he overwhelmed Sean Asher at some point who doesn't move very well as it is and has shown some chin issues here recently in the later part of his career. So that's the breakdown, guys. Good luck with this fight if you're betting on it.